Good evening. This side Rahul Magan here. So today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic which is about EFX matching engine. But before to talk about this topic, I would like to tell a small interpretation issue. And you know that we never shoot videos for uh, for the sake of uh, viewers, like, dislikes. These all are immaterial, right? So somebody called me today and said that I need this guidance. He is a college kid. And he, and trust me, I gave him 10 minutes, you know. And finally, then he called me. I gave him 5 minutes on the call as well. Then finally, I told him that, sir, in case you're looking for more time, it is subject to consultancy. It is definitely not complimentary. He felt offended. Can I ask one question from all the people? You guys are sparing lakhs of rupees on colleges. And this is the last time I'm explaining. Lakhs of rupees on colleges. Many guys come to me and say that they are doing a degree program, they are doing college, they are doing MBA, they are doing chartered accountancy course, they are doing CFA, is all free. Is Institute of Chartered Accountant of India is charging free? Is CFA not Chartered Financial Analyst? Certified Financial Analyst is charging free. Is everything free? Boss, I get around 400 plus WhatsApp messages every day. Apart from 400, whatever I get, we have our 44 WhatsApp groups which I'm running. 400 plus messages I get every day only on WhatsApp. Just assume if I start giving two minutes to everybody and out of this 400, some around 50% is the complimentary messages, around 30% is the projected sales lead and 20% is the clients. If on these 50%, around 200 messages, if I give two minutes, it means 400 minutes and one hour is 60 minutes. It means six hours in a day. You know, this is the last time I'm telling to you, our YouTube channel is not like Siraj Rawal YouTube channel who copied the content from some other author and presented on his channel and claimed that he made it. Neither we are a YouTube channel who is charging money from you to give the information. Like Siraj Rawal charged $200 from per student and said that we give you what and he not gave you anything. We are not like that. We are a YouTube channel who give a complimentary information about the fresh perspective. And I tell you the video which I'm going to share, no one, no one dare to share about this video. For a dare, no one knows it about. So sir, this is the last time I'm explaining to you. You may mind it. That is not a problem. You may dislike this. That is definitely not a problem because our YouTube channel will continue to grow. Today we are at 2000 videos and practically uh, probably by December 2020 we would be around 7000 videos. So this is not a complimentary service which we are running. It's around 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm shooting this video only for you. But if anyone called me and said that I need the holistic information about this on a complimentary note, then this is definitely not possible. Not today, probably five years down the line also. That's how we work. You like it, dislike it, that is not our problem. As simple as that. But once you find a YouTube channel like us, let me know. You know, who is giving complimentary information free of cost and that to add the updated knowledge and having the capability to challenge the status quo. That's it. So, here we go. Today we're going to talk about a very, very important topic, which is nothing but the EFX pricing engine. You know, I have to admit that Monetary Authority of Singapore doing a wonderful job because one good thing Monetary Authority of Singapore did is that they introduced EFX matching engine in Singapore. But having said that, how much latency time would get reduced, it's something the time will tell. 
According to my knowledge and the statistics available, Singapore is holding the where the lowest latency in the world. And I think two undersea cable are under designing and probably as and when they're going to be launched, then the latency in Singapore would reduce low. Further low. And having said that, Singapore is also losing the huge market share in foreign exchange that is also a reality like in 2008 singapore was known for bespoke portfolios prop desk commodities and almost cpo which is commodity pool operator now this cpo is just like a dinosaur now i have hardly seen any newspaper who talks about cpo which is commodity which is commodity pool commodities pool operator i have hardly seen god knows where this cpo went out to be honest but anyways now the problem is that when people talk about EFX pricing engine, you know, human mindset is like that. They tend to forget every, every other thing. They feel that this is the only thing they do have. The EFX pricing engine is the only thing which I have. There is nothing after this. No, that is definitely wrong. EFX pricing engine is amongst the lead, no, sorry, not the lead, the light lead engines we have. Everybody cannot have EFX pricing engine. That is also sure. Although I have no indemnification or no personal grudges from any European bank, but without quoting the name, you can guess that there are a lot of European banks who even after 10 years will not be in a position to have EFX, EFX matching engine. One thing I surely agree that EFX matching engine is the norm of the day. But having said that, till what extent it can reduce the latency and what asset classes it do carry that is always a question at least for me because i strongly believe that one platform in a financial market which of course we will discuss is much better than this efx uh, matching engines you know now i don't say efx i will use matching engines because we always use matching engines in interbank markets so very difficult to repeat efx again and again so how so this F, this matching engines is nowhere compatible to them. Now let's start from the scratch. The world financial market is having multiple players. In the books of certified financial analyst and uh, FRM, file to risk management and GARP, it is said that it is buyer and seller. No, that's incorrect. In financial market, the players are buy side players which are AMCs, asset management companies, which are import importers, ExxonMobil, Petronas, Samsung, uh, Petrobras, all big boys and other players. Second is the sell side, which means the banks. Banks are always sell side, that is for sure. You go to any country, London, Luxembourg, US, Europe, Australia, whatever, any country, they are always sell side. Third is the liquidity providers, which is shortly known as LP. Every country is having a different regulation on the LP. Singapore holding a different regulation on the LP. US having different regulation of the LP. In fact, different provinces of US, just like California, Texas, Philadelphia, uh, Mexico and all, all uh, different. Uh, not Mexico, uh, Philadelphia, New York and all. They have different uh, plus minus addendums on this liquidity provider norms and all the big boys like Goldman, JP, City, they need to adhere to all. Then we have one more party in the game whose name is liquidity customers. Liquidity provider and liquidity customers are like Singapore and Somalia. The name might start with S but one is East and one is West. What do you respect? And one party in the game is very important party and that party is nothing but the financial data reference provider. And this role, according to me, is very well managed by two people in the world, which is Reuters and Bloomberg. In fact, for me, it is difficult to say who will get 10 out of 10. I will give 10 out of 10 to both. Without any offense, Reuters is very good in, in foreign exchange. That's why I've used this. And uh, Bloomberg is very good in uh, fixed income. That's why I use Bloomberg in, in uh, fixed income. I'm not saying that Bloomberg is bad in foreign exchange, but Bloomberg is not at par with Reuters in foreign, foreign exchange. But when it comes to fixed income, Reuters is definitely not at par when it comes to Bloomberg. 
to be honest. So every both of them are having their USP. That is why if you go to any bank, big bank like Goldman, JP, City, Standard Chartered and all, you would get to know that the banks hold every good trader have one Reuters and one Bloomberg. That is. So the following is a hierarchy. In financial market, the instruments are never been short. Example, the number one is the financial data reference provider. Financial data reference provider includes Reuters, Bloomberg, of course we have two or three more. But Reuters and Bloomberg together cover around 95 to 98% of the market. Hardly 2% of the market is covered by the rest. Financial data reference, financial data reference provider means is just like an aggregate platform. Sometimes in interbank market people are also known as AP. Aggregate platform means they gather the data from the interbank, stored at one place and pass. Simple. They are nothing but the postmaster. So they gather the data from interbank, collate, aggregate and pass. That's it. Which people, those who have a license of Reuters and Bloomberg, they see that and they take a trading position of that. That is a different thing that they do not know which, which rig to see. Rig stands for Reuters Instrument Code. We have multiple rigs. We have multiple rigs in Bloomberg also, to be honest. They don't know that. Then we have ECNs. ECNs stand for Electronic Communication Networks. But before moving to ECN, we have one issue with Reuters and Bloomberg, both. Now this issue more or less resolved, but not completely, to be honest. The issue is that both Reuters and Bloomberg cannot do the matching. They cannot do the matching. Example, if I am Goldman and I have a prop desk, I am running around $2 billion worth of wealth. I am getting quote from the buy side. I am getting quote from the sell side. I am a bank Goldman, so I am a sell side. I am getting from the buy side. I am getting from the sell side. Can I match this? I cannot. Using Reuters and Bloomberg, I cannot match that. That's the biggest problem. But having said that, Bloomberg have... Uh, reached a lot of success in the recent past with the launch of their EMS execution management system which is shortly known as EMSX on Bloomberg. All the Reuters claim that they have FXOL you know but I don't know till what extent FXOL is uh, able to compete with Bloomberg EMSX. It is said that Bloomberg EMSX execution management system holds around 15,000 plus banks, brokers and financial institutions including private equity players. That's very handsome amount, to be honest. So one is financial data reference provider. Another is ECNs. Electronic communication networks are those platform who trade electronically. So example FXOL, example TradeWeb, example EMSX and there are multiple. I don't know but one of the articles in uh, you know around uh, published a uh, few weeks ago Suggest that if I include US and Europe, then I have around 36 plus order management systems in the globe. 36, 36. And out of 36, predominant uh, the coverage is in the hands of around top 5 to 6. Rest all line uh, 24, 25 are having not less than more than more than 5% of the market share. So 90, 95% market share in the hands of 5 and 6 and rest hardly have 5% market share. You go to Google, you will get the name of them. That, that, is not, that is not difficult, but finding how they operate, that is very difficult, to be honest. Then we have one which is known as the e-matching engines or e-fx matching engines. They have a capability whereby actually what happens, like I am a trader. I am a trader. Now, I don't know how many of people know that the difference between trader and a sales rep. Sales rep in banking market known as sales representative. Actually, when you dial to a bank, you don't talk with trader until you are Reliance Industries Limited, Exxon Mobil, Samsung, Petronas, that's a complete different thing. But until you are at this position, you do not talk with traders. You talk with a guy or a lady, this they are known as a sales rep. Now, sales rep means, example, I call to somebody. Now, let me tell you, I call to somebody. Example, I got a call from somebody and uh, suppose his name is uh, Tan and he's calling from Australia. So I'll show you how exactly it works, how FX engine work. So Tan will give me a call and I, I accept the call from Tan. Hey Tan, how are you doing boss? Hey, I'm doing good, thank you. So Tan, how can we help you? I need, a, I need to sell Aussie and buy dollar. How much? One million Aussie? Okay Tan, hold on, tick. 
Tick means I will put on the pause. Now suppose the trader I have who is sitting in the next door, his name is Ram. Okay, so I repeat, Tan, my customer, and suppose he is Telstra. Telstra is the Vodafone of, uh, of Australia. He is Telstra. I am Rahul. I am a sales rep and he is Ram. He is a trader. What I do, I'll put on the on the pause. I'll call to Ram. I'll say, Ram, 1 million Aussie right away spot. Okay. Then Ram will say, okay, 0.67. Then I do pause off. Okay, Tan is 0.67. Tan reply, no, I'm getting 0.6690. Hold. Ram, 0.6690. Okay, 93. 6693. Okay, suppose the final deal is done at 0 0.6698, assuming, or 6697, whatever. So, Tan, who called me, then what do I do? Okay, Tan, thanks. Thanks for your deal. See you soon, mate. Deal is done. Tan is happy, Tan is over. But the problem actually starts from here, where the human intervention starts and this human intervention is actually being replaced by the EFX, EFX matching engines to an extent. Now, I am happy I did a deal of 1 million Aussie. Ram is happy Ram did the deal. But Ram, he sold Aussie. JP Morgan bought Aussie. But the problem is that when Ram was doing the deal, the probability of finding an interbank customer, interbank customer could be HSBC, JP Morgan, Standard Chartered, sorry, I'm JP Morgan. It could be HSBC, Standard Chartered, Goldman, Doshe, Barclays, City, any bank. The problem, the probability of finding these customer right up front is less than 1%. So when Tan give me a call, I say, hey Tan, what's up mate? I'll forward to, you know, Ram, it is not possible for Ram to have a customer right away on the board. So sometimes Ram give the price with Ram himself do not show he will get in the market or not. So Ram bought at 0.6696. Okay, I am just giving a hypothetical example. But Ram wanted to sell to a higher level. It might possible Ram will have a customer. It might possible Ram throughout the day will not have a customer. That create an issue which is known as NOP, net overnight position. And in Indian context, it creates another issue which is NOP, net overnight open position. So that two are the different things. But EFX matching engines resolve and or try to resolve this problem to a high extent, according to the theory, but practically don't. So what it do? Now the whole situation changed when Ram gave me a call, uh, when Tan gave me a call. Now Tan called me, Tan said, hey, I'll say, hey Tan, what's up mate, how are you? Then Tan say, I want to sell 1 million Aussie, give me a quote. I go to Ram, I say, pause, I go to Ram, I say, Ram, I need a quote, hold. Ram go to EFX matching engine, it's an automate engine. They'll say, they don't have, they have a customer. And suppose this customer is in Euro Aussie. They have a customer in Euro Aussie. And my customer is Aussie dollar. It means the dollar to Euro leg is on the shoulder of me or Ram, whatever you say. Then this system will automatically compute the price and this system will give the price and that price I will forward to TAN and having said that, immediately the Euro Aussie, one of the leg for Euro Aussie is Euro Dollar and Aussie Dollar. There are two legs, Euro Dollar and Aussie Dollar. So Aussie Dollar leg will get settled automatically via EFX matching engine. Of course, having said that, the latency rate play a very important role. I agree that if this deal would have done in Singapore, you would have a better latency rate compared to you have in India. And mind it, my dear friends, the big boys like Goldman, JP, HSBC, a latency rate matters. It do matters. That's what. It do matters. There is, I hardly, I hardly have any in, uh, interpret, uh, interpretation issue as far as the latency rate is concerned. But the problem starts here that when I have an EFX matching engine, how many asset class it do covers? Because we have FICC fixed income currency and commodities, 
So that's the biggest problem. Now I read this paragraph again, which I read yesterday night to let you know. Gilan Tan, I know this person, executive director of financial market development at, at MAS, noted that Engine will provide more effective price discovery and improve liquidity for the clients in the region within Asia trading hours. I'm not completely in agreement because the reason of the MAC that it depends upon latency and it depends upon how much asset classes you support. So this is not 100% correct statement. More importantly, on Monday, Bloomberg reported that Singapore currency market saw an average daily volume of 633 billion in April 2019 as per Bank for International Settlement. Having said that, how much of this market is interbank that we need to see? And more importantly, how many of this market is non-NOP that we also need to see? We don't have that data and BIS2 don't have the data. I can assure you because I read the trial survey of BIS very carefully. Now the problem, problem here is that after that we have one more terminal and this terminal in the hands of big boys just like which uh, includes peer-to-peer -peer terminals which includes the edge technology. So the world of our financial market is very big. It includes Reuters, it includes Bloomberg, it includes ECN, Electronic Communication Networks, it includes uh, FXOR, it includes OMS, Order Management System, it includes uh, EMS, Execution Management System, it includes the EFX Matching Engines, Automated, till what extent, and it support FICC, very difficult to digest. It supports peer-to-peer, -peer, it supports edge technology. Standing today, edge technology is the highest standard we have in the globe. Unfortunately, except few big boys, majority of the boys do not have edge technology. And this edge technology is unfortunately not available in the public domain. And there is hardly any text which is available about the edge technology in the public domain. And we cannot let you know the private thoughts in the public domain. But if you ever saw edge technology, which is difficult to see, then you will get to know that both Reuters and Bloomberg's stand nowhere before the edge technology. So EFX matching engine is two steps before the edge technology. Now standing today, Singapore is moving towards EFX matching engine. It means that two steps are yet to cover. And God knows, by the time Singapore have edge technology, probably we have edge 2 technology. Example, cloud computing 1.0, 2.0, and now the world is moving 3.0. Simple. Now, to end up this video, a lot of people come to me, that is one thing you need to learn. Like the students called me, what do I learn to be successful in Singapore, to be successful in financial markets? Sir, you need to know these things. I agree you may or might not have these things in your curriculum. I agree Institute of Chartered Accountant of India is busy doing politics. The Chartered Financial Analyst or Certified Financial Analyst do not have time to teach you this. I agree that, but having said that, you need to learn these things. Because by hook or by crook, you need to learn maybe by training or what. If you do not know, then it's next to impossible for you to survive. I would like to cut my video with two information. Julius Beer, which is a private bank, wind up around 300 jobs today. CIBC, is winding undisclosed amount of jobs. Dubai Islamic Bank is closing around 500 positions. I have not seen a single day pass when banks are not cutting the job. And majority of the people, those who ask to step down or ask to leave, they are either CA, CFA, CPA, and in some cases both, or maybe all three. But they are stepping down. They are stepping down because the requirement of the industry is different, which they not been able to be. So we really need to see that till what extent EFX pricing engine will match. In the next video, we talk about the integration of EFX matching engine with Project Ubin and Project Jasper. Remember very carefully, whatever new technology right now coming in the market in the world of foreign exchange, this technology has to integrate with the crypto standard. That was not the scene in 2008 when I started my career because crypto was not there. But now 
EFX magic engines need to integrate with crypto standards and 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 once again indirectly or directly link with the project to be in or maybe project Jasper or maybe multiple projects which are on the way. That's how. With this, we thank you very much. You know my mobile number, which is plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. You know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global. My alternate numbers are mentioned on my website which is www.fixedincome.global. Have a good time and talk soon.